All right. I switched that command, right? Yeah, we're good. Okay. We're just waiting for them to start. Ah, had a bit of lunch. Had some coffee. We're gonna have three more streams today. <laughs> I'll be covering at least two rounds of Friday Night Fights today with uh, maybe the third, depending on time. Uh, in two hours and 45 minutes, I'm gonna go play in on the ground op as a sister of battle in the fifth OML. Uh, and then after that finishes, we're gonna get right into some DayZ. I just gotta perhaps micro a few things uh, in between because I don't have that much storage space. <laughs> Uh, and then after that, we'll be working on, uh, I'll be doing some video editing, scheduling some stuff, and, uh, maybe some mission dev. I've already started scheduling what I'm going to be doing next week. That's going to require quite a bit of mission dev as well, but we'll probably take care of that over the weekend. Uh, because we're not going to do any ops except for the on-the-ground thing. No, no, that's a lie. Um, we've got on-the-ground, Doc's, uh, Global Occult Coalition, what does the GOC stand for in the SCP universe again? Global... Is it Global Occult Coalition? I'm forgetting the O in GOC, but we got an investigation-style horror op, uh, the start of a four-mission campaign in there. And then Friday, or excuse me, Sunday, we'll be doing the fifth hellfire op and i misspoke because uh earlier i think on thursday i said there was no other pay for pains coming no it was um yo no it was thursday morning i said there's no more pay for pains coming other than the current campaign that's a lie there is a planned one in a few weeks and i'll have a document going for that and we'll uh, start prepping for it the day prior the entire week for that uh as we also work on pay for campaign with pog and then I think that's going to be the last pay for pain for at least six months. Uh, again, once pay for campaign for Pog ends, I'm going to be taking like a three to six month break off of that. And we're just going to focus on Daisy shenanigans. Uh, speaking of, uh, tonight is going to be the last Daisy stream for this month where all of the funds contribute to operations. So after that, I'm going to take everything we've made and then convert it over to operations on the document and then ops will hopefully balance out by the end of the month and then we'll get into a nice rhythm because i'm trying to get like everything on the schedule sorted for all of that and then we can finally have some normalcy again uh, and then i can focus on some uh, other projects daisy uh, editing for example there's something i want to do with that there's also a potential uh pvp commentary thing i gotta see if that offer is still good for some other stuff but yeah just Oh, moving forward from there, take it easy in November and uh, get into a nice rhythm. And then I guess it's just raising money for taxes in April. <laughs> that should be fun. And we'll go from there. Otherwise, how are you all doing? Hope everything's all right. Secret War went really well. Had a few players report some lag spikes. A few people died because of an AI bad frag. Uh, there won't be any AI in the second and final mission, uh, but it's definitely going to be a bit more difficult. I also need to make sure we don't have anything on the ice areas because the AI pathfinding really struggled on that. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm excited to uh, conclude that operation. Already got all that scheduled out, and that is TFAR. All right, one second. I'm just checking something on mobile. Cool. All right, let me go ahead and get our prediction going here for first round. This FNF match, blue four is attacking. And op four is. And I'll go ahead and put that in now for 20 minutes. Might as hell. Awesome. Right, oh, Master Vampire, welcome. But yeah, so the reason we get to wind down a little bit is because the past few months I've been really pushing to, uh, you know, raise, it was like, yeah, $40,000 for half of a wedding, because it's a Greek wedding with over 200 people. Uh, I've got 35 of it in an account, and then the remaining five will come from um, 
part of Twitch's payment for me in 11 days. So now that all of that is raised, I can start taking it easy again. We don't have to go so hard on all the pay for pains and whatnot. Uh, it's just my goal with it is it's in a high interest savings account at the moment. And as some of that money is used, I'm trying to balance it out. So the interest I make off of that over the next year, uh, I can also use that money to then, you know, buy some uh, gifts for people. Because a Greek wedding, apparently you need to uh, get a few gifts for everyone involved. And I've got some fun ideas for that. But I'll just take the interest out of that money and do something like that. But, you know, I'm always trying to think 20 steps ahead to maximize everything. <laughs> Will SL Dream be the flower girl for your wedding? I don't think it'll be Dream. I think it's going to be uh, someone on Bloodwing's side of the family, Radical. Um, unfortunately, you know, we've had to fill that position with somebody else, you know? It's it's tough to <laughs> make all that work out, you know? But Dream, Dream can be our backup flower girl, sure. Why not? I'm down for that. <laughs> Otherwise, let's go ahead and start covering FNF now that I've uh, taken care of uh, some of that IRL stuff. But if you do exclamation point schedule, I have most of next week's missions properly scheduled out. I might do a few more, but it just depends on how many mission files I can get done between now and the end of uh, Saturday. But otherwise, let's go ahead and cover what we have for Friday Night Fights here. So Blue 4, this is the map Corsac. Uh, this is the same AO where we did a lot of stuff. If anyone remembers the um, Autumn incident, or was it the Autumn autumn war autumn campaign basically a bunch of people versus a bunch of uh anime zombies <laughs> that was pretty fun uh the first mission was done uh around this ao specifically with this being the end point here but you know references aside let's go ahead and cover what our operation is today so tasks blue four attacking they have to okay this is all ron again they are attacking a sector trying to destroy a cache and they're attacking a terminal site i don't know why this is now bugging out and saying they're defending because op four is supposed to be the one defending so We'll mulligan that information. But otherwise, mission details here. It's a kilometer and a half of render distance. 104 to 5 points. Oh, by the way, Radical, thanks for the thousand bits, buddy. Appreciate it. Because uh, now all the money just goes to taxes. Uncle Sam's going to want his cut of that 40k. Hide me. Anyway, <laughs> 104 to 5 points for the defenders. Fortify color is going to be green because we are in a forest. And the timeline is going to be your standard 50-minute round with the 15 minutes of safe start in the beginning. Uh, log parameters. Looks like nothing custom in there. All right, blue four are our standard U.S. Marine woodland kits. So we have, I think these are full auto M4 platforms. I could be wrong, but like 99% sure. Um, like spar 16 or something, or four 16s. Blanking on it. Whatever those weapons are, but it's a 5.56 five, M, you know, M4 style weapon. Otherwise, uh, Mark 211 for the marksman rifle, uh, 249s for the light machine gunners, and 84s for the um light attack, light anti-tank, excuse me. Uh, and then we've got some transport trucks for Op4 to work with. Otherwise, Op4's loadouts are going to be uh, Russian Ratnik woodland kits, so AK-74, GP-25 systems, SVDs for the marksmen, RPK for the light machine gunners, PKPs for the medium machine gunners and Delta, and then RPG-7s with two warheads for the light anti-tank. And they had a single UAZ, which wasn't listed in the opening, but I guess they just wanted to give a vehicle a 7. Otherwise, I know Delta's medium machine gun... Oh, there is no Delta! Interesting. So Blue 4 is just rifle squads, and then Op 4 gets Delta to work with uh, those medium machine guns. So otherwise, yeah, that's why we didn't see a machine gun listed in uh, Blue 4 there. Interesting. Otherwise, Puma is going to be leading Blue 4, Gazog, and Chris under Bravo Actual. Gazog, I don't see any leadership, actually. It's just Gazog with the Marksman Rifle and Chris as the Medic. Weird. Tackleberry, Kremlin, Frisia, Wheaton, Vagrant, and McBain being under Bravo 1. Bravo 2 has Banks leading with Cheeseburger, Little Banks, Maxic, Depso, Skipu, and Zixme. Zixme is always one to watch. Nemesis, so Scandi Recon also on Blue 4 as well. Nemesis leading Charlie with Cullis as the Marksman, Kabooby Face as the Medic. Cats, Purton, Bot, Mac Marine, Yanni, and Duitson, Charlie 1, Charlie 2 has SL Dream, Hedge, Alexander, Steve, Corvac, and Flying Finn. Op 4 Mead led by T with Goose as the 2IC. It's not Pair leading so, Alpha with bombs as the marksman. Marchuna, or uh, it's Marucho, that's it. Uh, being the Alpha medic, Alpha 1 has Henry Nolik, Bursty. Oh, they just merged everyone together, so Alpha's merging everyone together. That's usually how Pierce's community and when RW does things. But otherwise, Bursty, Fancy Tom, Wiki Finn, Nolik, Pupper, Henry, uh, the rest of those guys all under Alpha now. Bravo has Batty leading with Whiteside as the marksman. Omri is an AT specialist because Bravo 
yeah, it looks like they're merging everyone together. So it's going to be Patriot, Omri, and Tom are all under Bravo. Charlie has uh, Sonnen leading with Arkin as uh, Machine Gunner, Greg, Nekomata, and Dogo all together. And then Delta has Harrington leading with Norris as a medic. Delta 1 has two medium machine gunners. That's France and Iqbal with an assistant being uh, Marcetic. And then Delta 2 has Mito leading Savan and Lurch, who are being the machine gunners. And Oddball is being the assistant. Ding. Give me one second. Let me rack up these objectives, and then we'll uh, go over things. <coughs> Wrong button. All right, so it says the sector is inactive. Oh, so Blue Force has to do all these objectives in order. Oh, boy. So right off the bat, whenever there's objectives in order, usually that means defenders are more likely to win. Defenders also have medium machine guns. Blue Force, though, they've got the better marksman rifles. I would take a 211 over an SVD any day. It's got 10 more rounds in that 20-round magazine. It's got a better scope compared to the freaking PSO. Uh, putting an SU-230A, I mean, makes it a lot better in my opinion. And you have to remember, FNF has adjusted their medical settings specifically with armor pass-through rates. So now, units are a lot less spongy for damage. Uh, if you get hit two or three times in the chest, you're dead. Uh, unless you're at an angle where it hits your limbs, that can't be helped. Uh, Arma hitboxes are notorious for that. Uh, which is why, you know, some communities, they just set it to if uh, AI take like a tenth of the damage, they automatically die. But uh, limbs are still an issue. So if you're trying to engage at an angle and you can't hit them directly from the front or directly in the back, you're going to dish out some limb damage. So units are still going to be spongy. But from the direct front or the direct back, only a few hits now to kill them. So that is something to consider. Still... This type of AO traditionally with three objectives having to be done in order, especially with the first AO having this big open field around it, I'd be leaning towards Op 4 and expect Op 4 to, you know, put a few explosive traps down as well. And we already see, I think they're rigging a bunch of stuff around here with explosives since I do see two demo specialists actually looking at the doorways and whatnot. So I expect to see mines in here. Otherwise, how you take these objectives? First, we have the terminal. Blue Force interact with the terminal. Wait 90 seconds, terminal explodes. If in that 90 seconds an Op 4 member interacts with the terminal, stop the timer. The timer is then reset and then Op 4 has to interact with it again to start it back up second objective is i think that's a cache yep so blue four have to destroy this cache that cache is only destroyable when the terminal goes down once it's destroyed we move to this final zone which is this sector borders of it are this entire compound so as long as the attackers in this case blue four have a number advantage in the sector compared to op for the defenders uh the timer will uh for the sector will start counting down from i believe 90 seconds uh once that timer hits zero blue four win uh if at any point blue four lose the number advantage they have to then regain the number advantage and then the timer resets back from 90 seconds fnf rules also if you completely wipe your opponent you win by default even if Let's say you had five minutes to go blow up a cache that's 10 minutes away, but you killed the last guy in the defending team, you win by default. It's just how they work. I think that's the only PvP community where I cover that rule, because usually every other community just covers it based off of the objectives. <clears throat> but with all that all the way, SL Dream will be happy. <laughs> Is happy to be your backup flower girl. Are you on his stream saying that? And he's down to come to the wedding. <laughs> Look... Here's the deal. Like, in all seriousness, I don't think we're going to invite anyone from the stream to the wedding except for a few people that actually uh, come to my stuff IRL. Uh, Jan, for example, which he doesn't come on to the stream often, but I... His name... I won't give his real name away, but I literally offered, hey, you want to come over and try a bunch of alcohol? <laughs> so he came over for a tasting, and now he's uh, coming to my Halloween party and uh, game nights and whatnot, but it's funny how that shit starts. Uh, and then Shepard, which we'll be seeing tonight for the uh, fifth OML operation. Um, I think he'll be in the infantry, though, because I always play in the Sisters of Battle because they're fun to play on. But um, they will definitely get divs first if we have room, because how Greek weddings work, especially when most of the people are in Greece, is we'll put out RSVPs, we'll see how many people actually show up, and then I might be able to fill in a few more slots depending on who doesn't come. But that's a conversation for me to have with Bloodwing at a later date. Um, because I know Dante, for example. I mean, he's my best man, but... Ah, <laughs> uh, the chucklehead. But the wedding is at least not for another year, guys. So, Bloodway and I, were still venue hunting. We found a really good one that we like, uh, but it's going to turn it into a December wedding or a September one. But 
we're still looking at a few others just to see what we got but we found some really good ones we found some really shitty ones it's been a fun adventure but we'll get there when we get there you know so it looks like op 4 is going to be primarily setting up defenses around a cash sector and we already see them building some defenses here. So let me go over all the AOs and give their strengths and weaknesses here. So first off, this AO right off the bat, we have to give it credit because it's surrounded by a massive amount of open fields. Really great if this AO had some high areas to kind of capitalize on this, and they do somewhat, and they could build fortifications up here and make this really well fortified, but AT would just fire up here, hit this back wall, and do splash damage on anything that was up here. So this position's okay, but I mean, it literally can be engaged by like every direction possible then you have this area up here you could fortify it as well however actually no because the uh, terminals on the second story we know by proxy this is invincible because if this were to get destroyed uh that means this terminal would be out of play and fnf is usually really good at you know making sure that shit doesn't happen so i'd imagine this is invincible you could fortify it up the same but again you have this back wall right here where if you put grenades uh in the form of grenade launched or at4s you could kill anybody here so they're opting to just you know trap it which i agree with it's always fun to see explosive traps in play uh but this ao it's like not the best to defend not the worst because it has what you need but you'd have to fortify it a little bit plus it's got some nice perimeters for the you know explosives to be set up and whatnot but this would be really hard for more than like a single squad to defend five more minutes here this ao kind of tough to work with as well you have some forests that lead right into the ao that's going to give the attackers a lot of cover to move up into this ao uh we do see that op 4 is trying to set up some two-story uh rooftop defensive lines which are great until those are flanked then you have all these guys exposed and they're kind of screwed so i'm gonna be honest uh this ao i'd say is a little bit worse than the first ao uh, because there's multiple ways that your attacking faction can get right on top of this AO, and it really lacks two-story cover. I'm not going to say it lacks two-story access, because what are all these guys doing up here? But it's really, really open, and they have to spend a lot of points fortifying. You see that they're trying to fortify the uh, entry and exit way, but worse comes to worse. I mean, you do have this spot here. You can fire through the windows. You can fire on the flanks, but... I'd imagine Blue 4, after they take this, they're going to probably have a force coming from the south and a force potentially coming from the north and pincer that. But the logical way to move these AOs is Blue 4 comes down. They see this force did route, so they're probably going to make their push right here um, to, you know, get up to the AO. And then they're just going to pull back and then come around this way and then attack from this angle because this is where the forested area is. And then also start looping around. They might have a secondary force come from the side, but they want to follow the green into the AO. And that route immediately flanks where this AO, where these guys are setting up their defensive lines. They're setting it up right here, but logically, why would Blue 4 come from that direction when they have to take this AO out first? They're not really thinking, um... You know, I'm gonna walk back. I know why they're thinking like this. They're treating this as if this tur uh, this cash can be hit at any time, rather than the fact that this needs to be hit first. So they're thinking that the enemy is going to come from here when in reality they have to hit that objective first we could see them then transition around but i mean it would be smarter just to then go around and fnf does do those maneuvers so i think t is getting a little uh short-sighted in how this scenario is going to play out now blue four could pull a dum-dum and actually just push right in and ignore the objectives and go for kills because that happens a lot more than you think on aos like these but I feel like if Blue 4 is really thinking about the objectives, they're going to do the wide flank around and just negate most of these positions. And you see that they are building some flanking positions right here, and I really do like how they're building these with little kill zones. Um, it's going to be hard to route grenades and explosives on it, especially if they set up some nice walls. There's a little bit of area to do it, but they're, they're doing the best with what they've got. But looking at the third AO, I mean, this one, it suffers from the same issue as the first. You do have this building right here, but you can't do second story access. You do have a little bit of look over on some angles in here, but it's still a first story area. The only second story access you have to, uh, you'd have to build a ramp up to this barn, but just look at all the forest surrounding it. The only open area is from the north, and that's not where your opponent's gonna be coming from because they have to hit the objectives to the south. So I'd say this is the worst one to potentially defend. This one, second worst, and that third worst. They all kind of suck. 
So, I mean, both AO, both sides have a lot going for it. Op4 is a really tough set of AOs to defend, but Blue 4 have to hit them in a sequential order, which if Op4 is smart, they're going to capitalize on attrition, and you already have that with some of the mines placed out there. I'd imagine Op4 is probably going to get some attrition damage on Blue 4. Blue 4 is already mounted up and ready to go, though, which shows me that they already have a plan in action, and they're just waiting for the timer to end. So, I think Blue 4 is already set on a plan, which is a good thing to see. Um, because they they already have something in mind and they're ready to go rather than, you know, they're still panicking to try to do things and that means players might rush stuff or whatnot, but I like to see that. If I were to give an advantage, I guess it, it's hard to compare the fact that, I'm going to be honest, like nine out of ten times when you have objectives done in order, the defenders win. However, this this really is looking like it might be that one out of ten time where the attackers win. Just because Blue 4 have better weapons with the 249 versus an RPK, that's 200 rounds with a faster fire rate versus an RPK with 45 rounds. And, uh, I mean, the 249 also has better stability. And then the Mark 211 versus the SVD, 20 round magazine to 10 round magazine, SU 230A sites versus PSO site. Armor pass through has been adjusted, so now players are less spongy. So if a marksman wants to kill you, he can kill you very easily marksman in the past you either had to get a headshot or you had to mag dump the guy now you take two to the chest you're dead um and marksmen really need to start adapting to engaging center mass uh because they've been engaging on the head for a few years but if they focus on engaging center mass instead they will get kills and we kind of saw that with the change last week but now it's a matter of can players continue that transition and again with how things are they're shooting at windows uh, so they can get some open sight lines here uh, and fire through the building. But now with how uh, things operate, how it used to be in FNF with those previous damage settings is if you got into an engagement on a 1v1, normally what would happen is you jump the guy, you'd mag dump him, he'd be able to turn around and get a few shots on you. And then you would have to then find a corner bandage and then rinse and repeat, but you would still have some pain damage. That way, when you got into the next firefight, when someone turned around, if they got a few more bullets on you, they could potentially knock you out from pain damage. With that now changed, there's less time for that player to turn around and hit you. So what we saw last week was there were some people flanking dudes and they weren't even able to turn around because they were killed that quickly, which in my opinion should be how it is. If you have a really good single player, here's one, for example, you you can just jump an entire fire team and take no damage if you properly angle yourselves properly. So it just rewards better players. Uh, rather than making it more even for everybody. Players like Zixmi got around that by targeting the head because that would be a guaranteed kill no matter what, but now they can just aim for the damn chest and kill the guy. What you have to be concerned about is making sure you don't engage them on the flank where some of your bullets might end up on the arms because the arms will always absorb damage uh, and be less effective. It'll still do pain damage and whatnot, but it won't kill the guy because it's not center mass. So Op4, they're pushing out to kind of take the territory around right here, but look at what Blue4, wow. So Command is going to go down the middle, but Blue4 is doing a pincer attack here. So right off the bat, if Op4 was holding the first AO, this would be a bad call, because Blue4 is just going to end up defeating themselves in detail here. I don't think Blue4 realizes they might have to do this in order. What I think they're going to do is have these guys come in, hit this objective, and as they're doing that, this group's going to come in and start harassing uh, that area and normally when you see a plan like this the defender wins because blue four defeat themselves in detail because these guys get into contact and then these guys lag a lawn because they're looking at objectives that op four doesn't need to defend yet uh so then one four one half of the pincer gets entirely annihilated and then this other half finally gets into contact but then op four just turns everybody around and then envelops them and kills them off this might be different because of the unique positioning of Op4. Op4 have decided to put a majority of their forces in the middle. So that might actually allow for the timing of the pincer to attack the middle at 
the same time. So as these guys are going to this objective and taking harassment, this group is going to start hitting this side from the flank where they don't have any fortifications from uh, after bypassing that area. So it's really just going to matter how quickly Charlie goes through that sector. I think Charlie needs to treat this as potentially hostile, but knowing that these objectives are being done in order... Uh, they can be a little more loose with this AO, maybe thinking that Op4, knowing that this is an attrition fight, is going to be putting more guys on the first and second objective. That's how I would treat it as a commander. Send in GOAT Team 6 now. I'm Tactical. back. Welcome back, buddy. Thanks for the 7 months resub. I hope you keep enjoying the operations, my friend, and hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. So I'm curious what you guys thought with the point split. If someone wants to read that out to me. But otherwise, blue four, yeah, they're going to go right for the forested area. And then on the north, right on the forested area. What concerns me is these guys are still driving, and they're within a kilometer of their first objective, whereas these guys have dismounted, and they are at about a kilometer. But these guys are getting closer. What they might do is try to dismount back here, and then really come around. I'm just curious if... Uh, Wickfin has heard those trucks or if he's just looking in this direction because this is a this is a fair game Okay, I thought I heard the trucks. I did not but this is fair to think blue four might do a dismount down here Because when you're considering how blue four can come into this AO there really are three options Did my mic die? Um, Your headphones died. Yeah, I was about to I literally check my uh, audio mixer. I'm like, oh, no, no, we're good. <laughs> God, I would cry. This is like a $300. It's a freaking professional sports casting headset. But yeah, no. So they're going to do a very far dismount, like back here. And I think their intention is to set up right here and then try to run people in. Or Puma's scouting this out on his own. He's playing as a wild card here, but as command, he can he can watch. But he's going to hear gunshots. I think he's trying to see if Blue 4, or excuse me, Off 4 is even going to set up a defensive in this AO. Because... I would, I would assume, based off of this, I mean, you see a big building, you see a big building, you see some small stuff right here, you see two perimeters. I would assume, if I was in Puma's position, there would at least be a squad in here. But I think that's why he's on the ground right here, to see if Op4 is actually defending it. So he might be able to solo it. But that's the thing. If he dismounts forces here, these guys are ready to hit this position. He could just run in and hit it himself if he doesn't see anybody. Or he can just have these guys route over and plink at him, and then he can slip in and do it himself. What he's going to run into, though, are the mines. He doesn't have any way to stop those mines. Also, Op4 should have shut this door. Oh, no, no, no. I see what they're going. They're hoping that someone just runs right in without checking. If you open the door, you have a second to pause and see the tripwire. So if you just see an open door, you're more inclined to run right in. Devious. Did. Did. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. You know. That wasn't open. That was not open. Why did why did I pan my camera and the door opened? Normally there's a bunny or a snake that can open the door. There's no bunny or snake. Why did that open? Okay, that was fucking weird. Yep. I swear to God, Arma's haunted. Sometimes this game is actually haunted. It makes sense. It's October, but that... That does kind of make it a little unsettling. Yeah, so here's the pincer. They're trying to pincer these two objectives, which... It's not technically a pincer. A pincer would be if they attack the same position from two different angles. This is two separate attacks. What's going to end up turning... In, it's going to end up turning into a pincer, though, because these guys are going to bypass. But eh, still not technically a pincer. It's going to be one attack followed by a second attack, which is going to just, you know, mold into one attack. But a pincer has to be done at the same time. And it's devastating when a pincer actually happens, but... I don't think that's going to be a thing. Now, I'm a little worried about company here because he might get intercepted by some Op4 patrolling around the northern side. But what we could very well see here, because these objectives are all within a kilometer of each other, Blue 4 could very well clear out the entirety of the Op4 garrison, run up, hit the terminal, and then just start a daisy chain process of the AOs because they will have the number advantage in this attack. And I think Patriot just spotted... No, the tree might be blocked. Yeah, the trees are in the way. I thought he saw him. But there is a little bit of coverage. 
the devs. Is that accurate? Because what, what I'm thinking in the back of my head is it could be a bunny or a snake rendered on someone's client, but when they open the doors, it doesn't render the bunny or snake for everybody else. It just opens the door server side, and it's fucking terrifying. Because it's pure RNG if it happens, but I've been in some ops where the door just opens in front of me, and there's nothing there, and I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, so Patriot definitely sees. He's got everyone coming up with him, so Blue Fort Command is going to get intercepted. Unless he pulls away in time. Yeah, that GL said no. So now it's up to... Oh, these guys are unifying before they move in. All right, no, this is this is just a massive attack on the rear, and Op4 is not ready for it. So Blue 4 is going to get picked off over here. They're going to think there might be more around, and then all of a sudden AO2 is going to get smacked by a massive attack. And the, the thicket is too thick, and they can't see the white smoke grenade. So all of these positions are going to be prone to being flanked except for that little sandbag on the rear. I I think Blue 4 is going to get this. We see them setting up right here, but they're just going to end up bypassing to hit this. Clear out the infantry, and then they're going to further bypass. So now it's up to those two leads to coordinate with each other. The question is, can they? I think the only saving grace Op4 might have is if this force gets bogged down and tries to push in when they don't need to. But it looks like they're moving on, and then they can transition, and we can just see a massive concave attack on AO2. That is going to leave them open to a little bit of flanking action from that southern team. But look, look at that concave forming. Now imagine that right here. And Op4 does not see it coming. I'm, I'm going to give it to Puma. This is tactically one of the best posturings of forces I've seen in FNF in a hot second. He has an entire platoon battle line now that's going to make a rough L-shape attack on the rear of Op4's defensive line. As a tactician, this is, this is ingenious. I think the only thing that's going to give him away is these guys hearing that truck moving... So Op4 is now going to turn forces around last second in anticipation of that truck. But Blue 4 is within a minute of engaging. So McBain kind of screwed up this entire ambush by driving in. So he's going to give it away. Oh, that's so unfortunate. It just takes one person to fuck it up. But he, he has no idea where his, his friends are. But that's going to pull attention away to over here and potentially open it up so there's a flank right there. But yeah, you got people starting to turn around now. They're looking. Yep, you got Hantai Arts going up. And now you're going to start hearing shots. Yeah, so the far group right here is engaging. Main force is now coming in. GL completely open up and start annihilating members of the command team. Rooftop Garrison already has multiple people sniped. GLs pepper the rooftop, taking out the entire second story group. Op4 had a few moments to react, and these GLs are just pounding where Op4 has set up some impromptu defensive lines. In that opening ambush, at least six KIA, the entirety of a Delta element down. Oh my god. So now you got that southern force now trying to come in. They were following that truck. They can now move in and start flanking, but I don't think it's going to happen quick enough. A big chunk of Op 4's main garrison just went down. And they've got another team, but they're completely out of position because they were looking for where other Blue 4 members were, thinking there was at least more than one guy. This is perfect for Blue 4. And I don't think Op 4 is in a position to properly respond. You have all of this flanking action because of this platoon battle line. It's now morphed more into a battle line rather than the concave attack because they've encountered resistance down here. But my god, has it been effective. And looking at the blue four casualties, there's only been one. 
one for eight. So a massive number advantage has started forming on Blue Force side. They started with a 5%, which only gave them like two or three, but now it's widened to nearly 10. You only have one member of this Alpha defensive group down here. That's the team leader. Northern group still has a good chunk, but the defense itself is now faltering and the central group is now starting to push in. This group, realizing they're lagging behind, now we're trying to double time it up the road, but I think Blue Four is going to outpace them. RPG is going in, they're trying to assault the rear. No, they engage the truck. I don't know why you do that when you hear all that gunfire in the, ah. Now we have a massive smoke push pushing. The Delta group up here is trying to set up a machine gun position to pin down anyone moving in, but there's too much smoke. I stand corrected, it looks like it's been somewhat effective. We do have a few guys down right here, but we have a freaking blue four group ready to now flank that position as the main force moves in. You got some pretty nasty CQC going on right here. Now we're seeing the attrition of the attackers starting to kick in. But we've got some great grenades being thrown in. A satchel goes in as he gets blown up by a grenade. I'm not sure. Yeah, the satchel was gonna hit the building, which knocks T out. And he was the last defender right here. Meanwhile, you have an explosive specialist leading the charge. Korvac might have uh, charges that he can set the throwable and he can throw it in here. He will kill everybody if he throws a charge. He's going for it. That's exactly what he's going for. Charge out. It moves in the front of the defensive line. He tries to throw a second one, gets knocked out. Not sure if that's gonna be effective. It does get a few guys on the rear here, but now everyone's turning. So he went one for two and he's only knocked out. He just had to be a little bit closer, but that was the right idea. Now it's just a standard match here with Blue Four attacking the defensive position. Five to four infantry. And Blue Four don't have anyone to flank, so this group might be able to withhold because they do have a defensive line. However, we are seeing some flanking shots now coming in from the defensive group down here. We see some defensive grenades being thrown. Korvac wakes back up. He will have two more explosive charges. He can crawl right up to this bush and throw more in. Satchel goes off, trying to take out the cache. It survives, but they can't destroy it because it's not in order yet. It's inactive, so it's invincible until they can hit that first objective. And they don't know that yet. So they don't know that this is meant to be done in order. Korvac now trying to mag dump. He throws a grenade, but that dude gets headshotted. Grenade gets caught on the fortifications here. Second grenade goes over. That might eliminate Norris. It does. And now you've got smokes being thrown as these guys are making a great assault. As more grenades are bouncing in, these guys are being forced. One is running for his life. That's the best call he can make, but he's going to run right into the defensive garrison down here. That is now his opponent. So these guys thought they would be safe pulling back as the other guy that stayed up there gets killed by a flanking attack from Mac Marine. And this guy realizes he is on his own. Meanwhile, we see the guys from the rear of that Op 4 team moving in and trying to engage. Blue 4 has a very solid number advantage at the moment. It could very well be a two, for, uh, two to one. We only have five Op 4 in the AO, another AO mem uh, Op 4 member there, and then four more on the side, Blue 4. We got five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, yeah. It's like 20 to 10 at the moment. At this point, I think we're going to have this round end to casualties before Blue Four might even start scoring. That other Op 4 member was spotted. He gets taken out. And you can see the floating Op 4 bodies after this building was taken out. So yeah, the fact that they threw a charge on there shows me that they didn't realize that this was a sequential fight. Op 4 trying to come back, but now they're going to be fighting a massive Blue 4 defensive line, which is just going to take these Hesco barriers that Op 4 created and use them against them. Spray coming out, Op 4 with only a few guys, they might not have the smoke grenade used to actually push up to this position. Tactically, this was brilliant, and we see that 249 in a rested position taking one guy out. Shots going over, they kill the marksman. But that shooter then gets taken out from a blind fire by Kremlin. Two still remaining, Op 4 has six members left. Still have Patriot trying to pick people off from the top of this building. He's gotten one kill, but can he get more?
Action's gonna die down. We're only 18 minutes in. GL is trying to fire blindly. These two op four trying to find a new way to sneak in. Blue four now had to transition without a company commander to try to get to this objective. RPG goes in. It's just low. It detonated down here. And Patriot's still trying to find an angle. I think that was his kill on ground command. He hasn't actually killed anyone in the uh, AO on this attack yet. Noob tube goes in. That was fired by Depso, and he gets a knockout on the back here on Machuro. First, he's out of RPG ammo, but he's picked up a Mark 11. And he starts taking fire from Depso, and he is knocked out. But with the shots that came in, notice how he it was a flanking attack. Bursty's arm was in the way, so it absorbed a lot of the damage, but he wasn't taken out. Depso could very well double tap here. The other guy, Machura, is up, but he is doing the default medical thing. And as the other guy wakes up, Depso double taps him. Depso's checking bodies. Does he find Murcho back here? This is very dangerous because he's in a very good spot. Depso might not notice him. He's picking up the RPG to see if it's usable. And now we have Blue 4 transitioning. They might come around like this and try to hit that one AO. Yeah, he hears those footsteps. Depso doesn't hear his. He's checking the bodies. And he gets taken out for it by the one guy remaining. We'll see if Blue 4 sends anyone else to deal with that AO. But I, I would assume these guys are trying to follow the force and then come around to that objective. Patriot looks like, did he get picked off? He might have. Or did he pull back? No, he got sniped by one of the marksmen. So you just have five op four remaining. Blue four, let's do a quick head count. Five right there. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So op four lost 50% and blue four only lost 15%. Five to 17, it's... It's not good for Op4 at the moment. Now it's just cleanup. So I'd imagine Blue 4 is going to transition over and then hit that objective because I don't I don't know what they're doing otherwise. Maybe they're lost. This group staying here to demo the cache when that group goes and hits that objective. And now it's just going to be a bit of a slow game as uh, Blue 4 without their commander is trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, I wish we had Papega still around, but they disappeared, like, over a year ago, I would say. Did Pog refund the linebackers for other units as they never lost them? The two I donated. Oh, JY. You're right. I don't think I added them to the, uh, the document, which is why they're not there. Let me do that real quick. I might have just done goofed, but I mean, that AO was never meant to really work with vehicles anyway. But uh, for future AOs, yeah, no, you're right. The um, two linebackers, I, I got it on my phone right now. I will quickly add those in. No, I have it in my document. I just didn't spawn them in because I'm a dumbass. <laughs> That's even worse. Yeah, exactly. Um, they'll, they'll be in the, because uh, we need to dev that mission tonight anyhow, but we'll, I'll get those in. I'm wondering if uh, he's going to find that marksman rifle that one of these guys had and start using it to try to pick people off. That's his That's his only real option. Oh, and he's spotted. Well, I don't think Pog... I'm going to be honest. People don't read those documents as well as I wish they would. But, I mean, all of their vehicle respawn timers also got cut in half. But I need to add... I'm going to probably replace one of the things at the 9,000 mark uh, for Op4 where... Um, all the site prices are reduced by 25% because we had that in the previous campaign. So he's moving back and forth, but he's taking some shots. I don't know why my tracers aren't working here. Ooh, Razor. Hope you're feeling okay, though, broski. Are you good for, uh, like, 8.30 tonight for Daisy? I want to start probably within 20 to 30 minutes after uh, the other operation concludes the 5th. You are? Perfect. 
Yeah, so these guys are gonna end up running into that four-man team and probably wipe them. These guys might perform valiantly, but I doubt they're gonna be able to kill 12 dudes with five, uh, four, excuse me. And then this guy is just trying to pull back for his life while he's dealing with a one to five scenario here. All India is one good GL. I mean, Blue Four got some really good GLs killing some guys on the rooftop when that ambush started, but I mean, hats off to Puma for that plan. I mean, it was, this was probably one of the best tactical executions in FNF I've seen in a hot second, which is why I'm gushing over it, you know? Yeah, right, OJY. I will admit, though, we don't have a lot of aircraft for Op4 to use at the moment because we tried to use them to take out the other 270 at their airbase, and it didn't really work. Tomer immediately runs into the enemy group, gets knocked on his knees, and gets headshotted by a machine gunner. Oh, no, by um, by Mac Marine. Mac on four. A few double-tapping shots. That's going to alert the rest of them, but one of them's taken out as he's trying to pull away. Op4 down to three players. Oh, oh boy, JY. Well, I guess I'll see you next Thursday then. <laughs> I think we'll do some dev after Daisy for uh, Pay for Pain then. I do need to do some dev anyway for Hellfire, and we can just take care of those mission files. Yeah, so all these guys are transitioning now. This is just going to extend the operation. One blue four members taken out. Can Omri continue? But look, Op4 immediately forming a battle line. I mean, they've got their tactics well set here. It's like 3 to 16 at the moment. SVD gets a knockout. Can he double tap? Or does he not see the angle? Blue 4 looking out. And he takes a headshot. 2 to 16. Because bot could be medic back up. Great way for the players here to be looking at. Did he just one tap? Oh, okay, no. I was about to say, I can't see Omri. Omri oh, trying to get that flanking shot. Pulls the RPG out. That's a... Oh, that's a PKP. Omri is going to end up running. He was trying to go for noob tubes. He's stuck in place. What the heck was that? And the other guy's just staying out there, man. I'm going to be honest. After Omri dies, I wouldn't be surprised if Malin just called it. Because from here, it's just going to be... Like, Marchuo had his chance. And he just kind of held. Hold up. Here we go. Two-man ambush. If Omri has some grenades, that would be a great way to open this fight up. Nope. He goes with his rifle. Gets some hits. Grenades late. Might still get it, though. Has to reload. He gets headshotted, though. As the gunshots alerted his presence, the other blue four here. And then you just have Marchuo kind of sticking in the same area. He's moving up. I'll give him credit. But this is going to be like another 15 minutes. As blue four now are just going to bulldoze the objectives. Could see some guys get taken out uh, by the explosive traps here, but... Double tapping shots there. Um, so, Silver Doc is hosting it. He's one of my buddies I met back in, I think, 700 Cadian back in the day, because he's one of Dante's buddies. Um, I don't think there's any one specific community that's hosting. I think Doc's just using his own stuff. Oh, no, he's right there. Doc, is it Dante's? Like, who's, whose hardware are you hosting off of? For technicality's sake, because Silver's asking. But it's not it's not my community. I think Doc already has this all set up somewhere. But Doc's kind of like me in that he can be a one-man show if he wants to. <laughs> but I know Doc also mentioned there might be, like, a, a spare slot or two, but he's also looking into getting maybe Cross involved with that as well. Thinking if it was possible to join those ops somehow. Um, so I do slotting for those ops on Wednesdays. However, if the first one is really good, I know we have quite a few players in my community that have earned a few rights to slot early. 
So after that, I mean, it's it's going to be very competitive. I would say the only other, the only two th ways I know to earn rights to slot early is number one, we're going to have another uh, little waifu war thing on the weekend. Probably not this weekend, but next weekend maybe. Uh, and whoever wins that is going to earn another right to slot early. And then the training docket, if you play a bunch of training ops and you do really well uh, and get the most points in there and place in the top three of everyone else, then you'll get some rights to slot early. But Send if not, I mean, six Wednesdays, now. I think at 2.30 or 2.45, no, it's 245 or 250, depending on if we have one or two ops, but that would be the slotting time, Eastern Standard Time, to get in. Like, you, that one, I think all those slots got taken. Everything got taken except for ground commands, but they were all gone within 30 minutes. So just read the announcements and be there for the slotting time, and then you should be good. Pay lots of money. I mean... If you want a right to slot early, C, for example, has something where um, he's giving me money every month and one of his benefits is I give him three rights to slot early every month. So I am also not opposed to that. <laughs> but yeah, if you want, you can DM me and we can work something out in that regard. But if we're talking about specific operations, I know we're going to be, I think, going through four of those a month, but Doc can correct me. But RenRed, thanks for the 42-month resub. Hope you keep enjoying the operations. I hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. Money buys everything. Yeah, as long as I still have a mortgage to pay for, money will still buy everything. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. No direct relation, relations to the community. Yeah, because we have four different communities filling slots for that op. But yeah, Doc runs his own server. I mean, hell, he was the guy hosting SPT for Tarkov for Dante, myself, and a few other buddies, which was fun as hell. With Bird Eye coming up and giving me a kiss and then just walking away as we were all shooting at him panicking. <laughs> oh my god, I will never let that go. But yeah, the slotting for the second mission will be uh, next Wednesday and then, you know, every subsequent Wednesday for those four ops. You're fine, Silver. I'm going to be honest, it is a bit of a learning curve, but, I mean, Arma in general is a learning curve. So, all you have to worry about is just figuring out the timing for announcements. Because, again, in a perfect world for me, let's see if he gets hit by the mine. <laughs> that will never get fucking old. <laughs> There's a second one down here, but... Oh, no, it's gone. That's weird. And the last guy just got knocked on con, so if he dies, I mean, it's GG anyway. Yeah, I don't know what happened to that one, but it's not there anymore. But he should be dead, but that's yeah, fine. And he's knocked again, and he's dead. That's GG. Blue 4 victory. Because they can still get these in 90 minutes, or in 19 minutes, so yeah. Bing bong. Bing dong. But yeah, no. Uh, blue 4, perfect plan there. Puma should be commended for that. That was a great victory, hands down. Not even close because the tactics used were perfect for it. And that's one of the 1 out of 10 times where the attackers actually win a sequential fight. <laughs> but yeah, Silver, it's... um. 9 out of 10 ops are going to be announced in the announcement channel for the Arma section. 1 out of 10 for the collabs is going to be announced in the collab channel itself. But, alright. let Ooh, you look here. Let's see what they do with this map. Alright, let's see. This is round 2. Where who's attacking? Op four is attacking a blue four sector, and no, it's not a sector. A blue four cash. cash and assassinating blue four ground command. Op 4 has a 7% numbers advantage. 
two VTR ADAs. Four assault boats and transport. While blue four has, I'm just rereading, two VTR 80s, two gases. So some truck gases, some car gases, and the assault boats. Two M1117s, they probably have the same script that turns that GMG into an auto cannon. That's terrifying though. A triple one seven is already a really fast mobile attack vehicle. And they're giving it a freaking auto cannon. <laughs> Some Humvee transport. Whoever came up with that for balance is nuts. I can see where they were going for it, but it's like, damn, that's, that's crazy. Yep, and now that we have all the commands down, let's go ahead and get your points out so we can do another prediction round. Yeah, I'm not surprised that we had a 30-70 split for the defenders, because... In sequential ops, it is very, very rare for the attackers to win, but, I mean, Puma played that perfectly with the rear battle line. Like, it's rare you see that level of tactics work out in FNF, but damn, that was great. All right, there are our points to blue for. Yeah, fair enough, Mac. But yeah, I've also noticed with Secret War, we had like four or five new people come on. And I'm going to be honest, I'm happy about that because that that op went pretty well, you know? So um, especially coming next week, we'll have plenty of ops to play. This week was a little lacking because I just used it to kind of catch up with a lot of admin work, especially with the new training rotation. Oh, shut up, Charlotte. Yeah, because we, we always need need new people to keep the community's numbers between 20 and 30. Ah. Uh. But yeah, the plan for the rest of the month is to get all the operations that are due out, start getting a little bit of a deficit going, start a November document probably on the 16th or 17th of October. And then get those ops sorted, get another poll out to see uh, another type of operation to run on the side of uh, the training dock and see how things go. More targets for WeeWoo to abduct. I don't really do abductions unless we're doing pay for pains or if it's absolutely necessary. But of course, those are always the memes that everyone likes to see, right? <laughs> All right. Timing-wise, we have another op to be at in about an hour 45. Ah, uh, unless this round goes super duper quick, we're probably only going to do two rounds of FNF today. So I can have enough time to upload this, delete it, and then have more storage for the other stuff. Is WK Melee still in the mod list? What do you mean by that, Zoni? And what are you talking about specifically? Oh, Doctor, don't threaten your player base with a good time. Bobby hoarding all the cocaine. Bobby, it's rare in Arma 3 where I find a character quite like Bobby, and I just hope he enjoys himself. Web Knight Melee? Yeah, so improved melee system. Um, Some ops we have it, some ops we don't. But it's not a standard because I don't want to have to constantly maintain it. Plus, melee, I'm going to be honest, does also overpower some ops sometimes. General Arma 3 AI are not built with uh, the power of letting the players use their fists. Oh yeah, Devil is ground command, and I am only a machine gunner in Doc's Ops, so theoretically Devil could tell me to go get molested by werewolves. <laughs> no! Parasites got stabbed. It was in London. It was like in London. I love how Devour 
yesterday had another mobile butterfly swarm come out and I was occasionally deleting one of the butterflies as gunshots came in and then Mac Marine flies over with the helicopter and just starts mag dumping it with the attack helicopter's uh, rotary cannon and it kills the parasite <laughs> attached to all of the butterflies. <laughs> Player base gave up and just started mag dumping the shit out of it with air support. <laughs> Hey, it worked! But yeah, we'll do some dev on that document tonight, and then we'll also put the D goal up if people want to put in some reserves, because I think with the amount of stuff I have, let's say hypothetically if nothing else gets purchased, we know that's not going to be the case, um... I have enough to probably fill two or three ops before we'll get into a habit of the player base. We'll just be able to glass everything beforehand. But with all that said, I mean, especially with Plinko to keep minimums, Plinko is definitely the cheap way to throw a bunch of stuff at the player base to kind of keep them set. But it would be easier if a bunch of sites were made. And then we varied the sites. The issue with the sites, though, is as the player base starts taking more territory, that lessens the areas where I can hide the sites themselves. But what I can also start doing is putting them in more cheeky locations that the player base are going to be less likely to find. What I will have to do in content, uh, in contrast, though, is start spawning the vehicles directly at the sites to tip off the player base, at least give them a hint of where they could be. So we'll have a new balancing act with that, for example, but it's going to get harder to utilize sites, but sites are already on like the second to last tier. I think what would also be really beneficial for that campaign is if people uh, buy out the new weapon tiers, especially to get the uh, AI better body armor. But I mean, if we go from Iglas to Stingers, Iglas are a piece of shit. Stingers will actually occasionally hit something. That would be a good trade, but if you could get them all to, like, the high-end AA and weaponry, where, you know, all the riflemen will start having, like, 100-round magazines and shit, that'll be a lot better for killing the player base. The issue is that's also the most expensive. And it's all fun and games until someone decides to have a change of heart and give the player base another 270. <laughs> oh, my God. really want to see him lose his shit, I can tell you where to send him to acquire a permanent friend that lives rent-free in his head. There's a few. Are we talking about real people or characters? What is the mission name? Save the driver. Oh, so that means Ground Command might be in the AO already and Blue 4 has to, like, QRF up to him. This has been a hot second to actually slot, though. Huh. We'll see how things go. Nonetheless, I hope everyone's having a wonderful Friday. I didn't mean for today to have four streams, but just kind of how it went. Yeah, so I am going to start setting up AA instead of in the AOs, because the AOs already have AA statics. I'm going to take the AA teams, and I'm going to set them up around where the sites are themselves to start giving some defense, but... What we can also do is if people get AA sites, we can basically put the AA Tunguskas around like the deep part of the AO to defend the sites rather than um, sending them directly to the front line. I think that would be a better defense. 
but I uh, we especially learned from the last stream if we get you know that uh that combo to get you know 10 prop planes to attack we need to either commit them all to one position or another I will though uh roll over what happened to the airfield I'll uh, negate some of the uh, air defense because I think one or two statics got killed but yeah I mean there's there's a lot there Because the only thing that can really reach the airfield is aircraft. Because of the sheer amount of stuff they have as a defensive perimeter. Yeah, and they have the linebackers now. Is that a landing craft blowing up right there? Huh. Oh, it's made by cats. Oh, boy. Beep, beep. All right. I see. So Blue Force spawning on topic. All right. Give me one second. Let's get our handy dandy prediction out. I will once again set it for 20 minutes. And we are just flipping the words attacking and defending here. Blue Force now defending. Op Force now attacking. All right, so the destroy objective is something on the airfield right here, and then the defend zone is in uh, Barmovno. Or Barmnovo, that's it. Op 4 has an MSR to route right into the AO. It's literally a four kilometer drive. And there is a secondary. No, not really, because uh, this is. I'm not sure there's ways to actually drive through uh, that spot, so they're gonna be forced to go down the MSR. Blue for, yeah, since they have triple one sevens, what's stopping them from just routing their forces up? There is this side road right here to then take, but Blue Four could just rush up with triple one sevens with auto cannons and stop the Op Four assault. I would love to see that. Oh look, Zoni's joining. I think that was the same Zoni we had in chat, but he is a Papega Pirates member. Let's see if he can dominate. I'd love to see it. Also, if you're in Northern Virginia, um, I have a lot of cider and mead. I need help drinking it because I have a little too much yeast and I'm worried that it's all going to expire. So I need to brew a lot more, which means I need to drink all the stuff in the brew bottles. So if you're in Northern Virginia and you want a drink, just let me know. <laughs> please be 21 years. Actually, no, 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 please. You have to be 21 years or older. I don't want to get in trouble. My liver needs help. Yeah, because I can. Uh, Bloodwing does not like it when I get intoxicated. I want to tell the stories, but I'm... It's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, maybe another time. But yeah, there's only so much alcohol I can have to uh, do drunk streaming. And then it's excessive. Cross-national road trip for cider, gotcha. Non-disclosure agreement time. <laughs> there must be a lot to brief on this, because we're not... Oh, we're still waiting here. It's also a larger AO, so I probably won't have time to cover round three unless I see the triple one sevens just rush op for a spawn, which would be the funniest thing. And they have auto cannon rounds. I'd be willing to bet on that. All right, here we go. Oh, 
I'm going to do roster information first. Depso leading blue for Gazog, leading Alpha Tackleberry with the Marksman Rifle, Chris as a medic. Uh, Ash, Zixme, and Mac Marine in Alpha 1, Alpha 2 as Little Banks, Kremlin, Greg, and Banks. Bravo being led by Norris with McBain as, excuse me, the medic. Nekomata, Marsic, uh, France, and Harrington under Bravo 1, Bravo 2 as Arkin, Doggo, Lewis, Reigns, uh, I'm just going to call Marine. Reen and Korvac. Uh, Echo, so a medium anti-tank team, has Omri gunning. I believe that's going to be a Maz. Uh, one assistant, which is Cheetah Burger, so that group's going to have four AT rounds, and then Tomer being the team lead. Golf 1, the first triple one seven is going to be Kabubi and Steve. Golf 2 is a three-way between Hirana, Wheaton, and Frasia. Interesting. Vagrant, one of the common commanders we see in FNF, is going to be leading Op 4 company uh, with Batty as the 2YC. Alpha being led by Henry with Tia as the marksman. Mark... Um, Marucho as the medic, and it looks like they're merging everyone. So the rest of Alpha has Pupper, Sancho, Bursty, Flying Finwicky, and Goose. They're probably all going to go into the same group. Oddball is leading Bravo for Op 4 with Whiteside as the Marksman, Dewey Sun as the medic. Bravo 1 has Mito leading Watsu Watsu Fancy, Bot, Hedge, and Seven. Delta led by Puma with Dobbs as the medic. Uh, Nemesis and SL Dream taking the PP, uh, PKPs there as the Mito Machine Gunners with Pertin as an assistant for Ammo. Malin leading Echo with Yanni taking the AT, and then Collison Cats being the assistant. And so that AT, probably an RPG-32, is going to have six rounds total. Yep, RPG-32. Uh, BTR-80 Alpha has Fawns and Snodge Bear together. And then the second BTR-80 Alpha has Maxic and Wiki Quartz together. It was a third, but I guess he merged into another group or he got kicked off. Otherwise, let's go ahead and look at our tasks here. So Blue 4 defending a uh, off-road, police off-road, interesting. And then their VIP, which I'm going to assume is Ground Command. Otherwise, Op 4 are going to be attacking those objectives, but it's glitched out and it says defend, because of course it does. Nothing different on its parameter logs. Blue 4 otherwise loadouts are Italians. So I think those are ACRs. Uh, one with a 203 launcher for uh, the GL4 team leads. Marksman rifle is going to be the Mark 211. Mini me uh, for the light machine gunner, but still, you know, 200 round 556 five, machine gun. AT4 for the light anti tank. Moz for the medium anti tank. And then crewman gets MP5s. They have three transport Humvees that can take four people apiece. And then the 717s have that 20 millimeter AP in place of the GMG. Uh, and then they also have that 240, uh, which is two 1100 round boxes. Also a smoke screen, uh, yeah, smoke screen if they want it. Op 4's weaponry, meanwhile, going to be Russian Marine kits, so AK-74s, SVDs, GP-25 for the grenade launcher system. Light anti-tank's going to be an RPG-7 with two warheads. RPKs for the light machine gunners, PKPs for the medium machine gunners. RPG-32 for the MAT team, and then a PP-2000 for the submachine gunners, which are the vehicle crew. Otherwise, they've got four rubber dinghy assault boats. Lovely. Those things die so easily. Two Gaz 66 trucks, or excuse me, four of those, uh, two Gaz MRAPs, and then two BTR 80 Alphas with AP and 762. Otherwise, that's pretty much the scenario. The destroy objective appears to be tucked away in here. Uh, the attackers get a search zone for the destroy objective. They don't know necessarily where it is, but it is this nice little truck here. And then the VIP is Depso, who is the commander, and he has to hide away in the yellow zone. Otherwise, his position is broadcasted live to everyone on the server once the round begins. So let's see. Within this AO, there's plenty of places for him to hide, including a large set of high-rise buildings, which I'd imagine Op4 could probably just satchel and level them to the ground. We also have a church back here. Is it enterable? It is enterable. We also have this little uh, mini icon area here that, uh, you know, you could hide away on. Got this nice little toll booth area as well. You could potentially hide under a few vehicles. I think all of these buildings are somewhat enterable. Yeah, so Blue Four is spoiled for choice on where they want to hide depth. So I think the best defendable place would be somewhere in this, what, six-story high rise? Yeah, and the rooftop for six. Um, but that could just get satcheled to hell, so maybe they'll put them somewhere else that's smaller. Hard to say. Or, you know, you could just, like, stash them in a garage somewhere and, you know, hope for the best. Because this is one of those AOs where it could very well turn into a game of hide-and-seek. But we'll just have to see how things play out. Righto, Miner, have a good one. 
See you for the GOC op. And again, I think GOC is Global Occult Coalition. I just can't remember. Yeah, not everyone owns every owns every single CDLC and DLC for Arma 3. We can give them cards. I'm sure some of them have the DLC for it for funsies, but... <laughs> And yeah, we'll eventually have Op4 slots. They won't be pay for pain for that because it's a training uh, rotation, but yeah, we'll get there when we'll get there. I tried to balance it for um, like a month to two months before we get those Op4 slots in, but you know, anywhere from four to six weeks. It just depends on how well they do and how many of those Ops we run. And that is all dependent on how quickly we get through other operations, because if I really go at full steam... We could run, counting it, for my community alone, not including my other obligations. One on Sunday, two on Monday, three on Tuesday, two on Wednesday, and then one Thursday, one Friday, and one Saturday. So that's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, 11 ops. And I think I only have like 20 to 30 do, if not less. But also, the DayZ stream tonight, if that gets a bunch of money and pays for more operations, or funds, excuse me, then we'll definitely have more to do for the month. But yeah, it just depends on how tonight goes and how everything else goes. Cocaine brick pile with a butterfly mine. <laughs> a flutter by mine, good god. Poor Bobby. Just wondering what Blue Force plan is. I'm gonna be honest though. Take these, rush one up the MSR and rush one on the other MSR. You will catch up for if you do that because everywhere else is a no-go for driving here. Like the 80s could get over this, but the deepness of the water right here, there's, I don't think there's a way for them to drive. Yeah, it's too deep. Unless they're willing to, like, all mount up on the 80 Alphas. Oh, they could also take the boats, but it's super risky to take boats. That That is going to be, on rubber dinghies, that is a 20-minute drive. But those 80 Alphas can fit, like, you know, 22 people. You could probably fit all of the infantry on both of those and then just go across. But again, it, it's going to be a drive. So this this is going to be a long round, regardless of how things go. But yeah, if I was Blue 4, I'd just get in one of these vehicle crews and just book it down the MSR. And if I see anything, auto cannon. Auto cannon is the answer to everything. something right now <laughs> I love how he built his own advertisements as well into the damn map freaking icebreaker the bro is a master at map dev and he's been doing it I can't think of anyone that's done map dev longer than icebreaker to be perfectly honest love a taste of her cooking. I think Bloodwind would too. Anyway. <laughs> These ads, man. just wait for everything to begin so schedule for the rest of the day uh in an hour and a half we will be playing on the ground in a 40k scenario i'll be taking a sister a battle kit because i just love the interface we get there uh and then after that op concludes after 20 minutes of that indexing and i stop the stream we will then go into daisy and play that for two to three hours i will then take a quick break and then we'll probably do some mission dev because i have the hellfire op i need to make for sunday 
I have stuff I want to get down for the next pay for campaign on the coming Thursday. Uh, I can work on the next what you call it operation, the one we just played today, the next secret war op. I can work on the next training uh, rotation docket and make a bunch more op four tiers of units and then start explaining how I want to divide the map up. And I mean there's there's a lot of stuff I can do on various fronts. Charlie, did you go all in on something? Jesus. So are they, well, I don't know what the heck they're building right here, though. This, in theory, is nice. And if you have a big open area to work with, then it's great. But what if someone runs up here and then pops a grenade in here? Fair enough. Four more minutes. They're playing Minecraft by stacking blocks together. Good God. Just from what I'm seeing Op4 do, though, like, this is... They're either going to try a river crossing and realize that's not going to be doable, or they're actually going to blitz down the MSR. Meanwhile... What the fuck are you doing with this? Like, this shows me they're gonna either go down here or they're gonna cut through. Why not just use the road at that point? I think they just realized that. Like, there's nothing over here. To, uh, no. Sometimes there's some really weird calls made. That's what I was thinking. You could, in theory, like, take the HVT and just put them here and then just defend this zone or put the HVT, like, on this hilltop and then just surround it. Oh, that's cute. Usually that's when an admin message comes up. But, yeah, like, I... I want to watch what these people do, because if they do this, and then they start driving north, I'm going to call them fucking stupid. Because they can literally just follow the MSR and do the exact same thing. There's nothing down that road for them. Like, they, they have to be taking ground command over there, or something. Like, there, there has to be a convoy that's going down in that direction, and they're just going to stall this out, out for time. That's the only reason I can think of bringing stuff down here, is they're going to set up the commander down on the bottom right. And I'm going to be honest, I, I think this AO is a bit dumb. It's too big, and it leaves way too much room for Op4 to drive. So a lot of time is going to be given just to get forces maneuvered in, and then there's even more room for Blue 4 to put more distance out to just stall the game for time. And people aren't here to play a stall game for time. They're here to shoot their guns. So if Blue 4 drive all the way down here, that's going to be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 by 3. I can't do trigonometry in my head, so I'm just going to say that's going to be an 8-kilometer drive if it was a direct route. In reality, it's going to be a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nearly a nine kilometer drive following the damn roads, which is going to eat up like 20 to 30 minutes and then leave only 20 minutes to shoot their guns. So that's 20 to 30 minutes of drive time on top of the 15 minutes of us sitting here. Waiting for the frickin' bigwigs to make a silly plan. But the the border... I get why the border's like this, but it should be, like, stopping here. I think they gave all this room to give Op4 more time to dismount. Which would be fine if they were given something quicker than rubber dinies. Because these are already gonna be, like... Ugh. It's painful to see an AO like this. 
Yeah, exactly. Drive 35 minutes just to get shot immediately by some fucker chilling in a bush. Pardon my language. It's just, I, I hate to see this. Yeah, no, they're going to totally convoy out and camp bottom right. That's exactly what they're doing. And then they're sending one triple one seven up to deal with anything coming down the MSR. Twenty kilometers an hour with what one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So what's twenty divided by eight? That's uh, like two and a half. So I'm trying to do math in my head. That means it's going to take roughly, like, yeah, 20 minutes for these chuckleheads to get around there. Ah. Oh. Where are you going? He's doing the fucking flanking bullshit. Ah. Oh. Just drive up the fucking road. And if you don't run into him, then turn off the side. Unless he's trying to, like, drive up to the coast instead, which... I'm going to be honest, from a tactical perspective, hear me out. I would not expect them to use rubber dinnies because they're going to be way too damn slow. So just run. Yeah, he's going to put it on the fucking coast to watch for boats. Oh, my fucking God. Like if it was assault, uh, not assault boats, because that's the technical term they're using. But if they were the RHIBs or the speedboat miniguns, then I would expect, which also, why aren't they speedboat miniguns? Why give them unarmed rubber dinies that move super slow? Just give them the freaking speedboat miniguns. That way, if Blue 4 actually decides to camp down here, you can use the firepower of those to punish Blue 4 for being fucking stupid. And why are you going down here? Why not? Go Ugh. I get why it's because this is a bottleneck that he wants to utilize. And if he goes up here, he's worried that... Yeah, so they don't even know how fast those boats go. Because that 117 could easily get here before those damn rubber dainies do. This is going to be one slow-ass game. Wait... Is there not a spare vehicle in here? What? Okay, why is the guy... <laughs> Let me explain why my brain hurts right now. Blue Force setting up all these defensive lines back here. The only thing I can think of is if... Blue 4 thinks Op 4 is going to be coming from the south instead of the north. Because the fact that Blue 4 still have a guy, like their guy in here, shows me like they have to now be going to get him or something. Which also doesn't make sense because if you're going to commit everything down there, then why wait there in the first place? Like, why not show an immediate pulling out? Maybe to force these guys at a dismount point? And then they notice, wait, this guy's moving, so then they have to go back. Which, to me, that just means that they really are trying to, like, pull out for every moment that they can. Because I think by keeping Depso in the AO, they're trying to get Op4 to drive all the way up to then do a dismount. And then pick him back up, and then start showing him on the map as going down there to force Op4 and then turn around, go back to their Vix, and then drive up more... Which infuriates me because that's just going to drain more of the clock and there's less time.
You know, if I was more of an asshole, I'm not going to lie. I would literally just get my phone and DM one of these guys and say, hey, this is exactly what they're doing. Because this is a massive fucking waste of all of our time. You know, and this is what pisses me off the most. First round, Puma did a textbook platoon battle line. A fucking textbook platoon battle line. And now we have this, just to waste the goddamn clock. I get playing the AO in a way that, you know, you want to maximize a strategy. I get that. From a defensive standpoint, there are so many ways you can make this AO defensible. And you can stash that guy anywhere, and then you can just send your triple one sevens out to start ambushes. Like... There's a logical and fun way to play this. But instead, Blue Force is just going to meta the fuck out of this one. And you know, I don't even blame Depso for this. I blame Cats. I 100% blame the Mission Maker for this. For creating an area back here where they can pull this off. Because anyone that understands the player base is going to see this and go, Well, what's stopping them from just like... Literally, with triple one sevens too, with an auto cannon, they can just put an auto cannon right here, stop any boats from coming in, put Depso literally all the way in the back right here, put him in the low ground so he can't get sniped by auto cannons, and then force the enemy to just come over this narrow choke point of land and just set up defensive lines here. Like, if I were to really game this AO, that's what I would do. And the triple one sevens, they're not amphibious, but you can just. You can just shove one right here and snipe anything that comes from the water. Like, this is a dumb AO. Now, that being said, if this was the start of Blue Force AO and Op4 spawned like up here, and we actually had the time for Blue Force to make battle lines and pull back, I would I would actually be interested in watching this because that gives a lot of time for people to shoot at each other to adapt and whatnot. But this is an AO deliberately made to waste everyone's time. And that's what pisses me off. Because we're just... What are we going to do? Just sit here with our freaking hands on our dicks or something? Because it's just... Send this in what we got. Team 6 now. Big bro slide. Thanks for the three months of tier 1 advance. I'm sorry you jumped into something so boring. Because... Fuck us, I guess. But hope you keep enjoying the operations nonetheless. Hope you enjoy the other streams later today. And I still hope you get somewhat of a kick out of this damn scenario. Like, I'm disgusted right now. This is dumb. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. This is also why... I'm, I'm going to get into trouble by saying this, but OFCRA, we still see in the triple digits. I mean, yesterday, they had 150 players. A few weeks ago, they had 180 so, plus. Let's give a warm welcome, shall we? Like, they had a 90 v 90, and it was great. I'm going to tab out here, click on a button. They have 70 players on tonight. The numbers for FNF have fallen quite a bit, and they're doing everything they can to stem the bleeding. But it's dumb AOs like this that I think push people out. And it kind of annoys me, because I saw Zony jump in. Zony's a great player. I'm not sure if he's still here. What the fuck? What? You know, no, no, actually, actually, I agree with this. Realizing that I'm going to be sitting around doing nothing for the next 20 minutes, I drown myself in the river, too. I think Lewis has the right idea. If I was blue four, yeah. Yeah, I'd drown myself in the river. But I don't see Zoni here, because I think Zoni saw this AO and went, no, fuck that. Because the first AO was great. The first AO was really good compared to this. Op4 had a lot going against it, but they had a sequential fight that really, we it just depended on tactics. And if blue four could pull off something that amazing, and they did, and it was awesome. Now we have this. And here I am, stuck to go, like, woof. <laughs> here's what I can do. Here's what I can do for you guys. One second. I got it. I got it, guys. Here's, here's what we're going to do. All right. Ready? Here's what we can do. It's an emo. There you go. I can't even make it go across the fucking screen. 
<laughs> there we go. That's what we get in front of the Plinko board. It's a goddamn emu. Here, here, hold on, hold on. We'll just occasionally tab in and go, hey, is anything going on? No. Actually, we might have the triple one seven engage boats in a second. Oh boy. Let's spawn camp people that literally just spent fucking 15 minutes driving in a goddamn boat. Well, actually 10. I'll give them credit there. But you think players want to just drive for 10 minutes after sitting around for 15 minutes only to get immediately one tap by a vehicle? They don't. Ay, ay, ay. And righto, big bro slide. Hope you keep enjoying the content, man. We got plenty of fun ops coming this week. Yeah, where's the subway surfer section? God damn. All right, nope, here, I got you, I got you. All right, let's just, <sighs> let's just do this, it's fine, all right, it's fine. Just, 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 just bear with me, bear with me, all right? I'll keep you guys entertained, all right? I'm an expert, I'm gonna close my robe here. Here's what we're gonna do, all right. <sighs> all right, here we go, here we go, all right. All right. Man, this AO sucks, yeah, I agree. It sucks that we have to wait for a bunch of players to maneuver into a position nine kilometers away. Yeah, couldn't the mission maker just, like, shorten the AO? I know, right? God! Welcome back to Losing Liru's Sanity. Yeah, Hog, and then I'll get Twitch banned. Won't that be great? <sighs> Hydrate, yeah, right? I was saying, you know, good point. I never was. Thank you for fact-checking me on that. You're absolutely right. See, here's the funny thing. These chuckleheads see the boats. Why are they so far from the triple? Why is one... <laughs> Why don't you have the gunner just in the gun to use the... <sighs> Where are they going to go? It's not like they can dismount over here. Just kill them. And then you got the freaking BTR crossing over here. <laughs> Because if they dismount over here, they're dead. So just, just kill them with the gun. If you're going to do it, commit. It's not like they can shoot back. They're on a freaking boat. Stop over tactically playing this bullshit and murder them. Don't even give them hope. Just kill them, dude. It's not hard. Because they that's the funny thing. This isn't even the... Like, if they drive out of here, they're dead. And you can't even kill them. That's the sad part. Huh? You just proved me wrong. Yeah, now these guys literally have to swim three kilometers. Good job. And they can't dismount here because it's out of the play zone, so they'll just get knocked back automatically. <laughs> you know, all right, cats, if you watch this back, I want you to know you're kind of an asshole. <laughs> you're kind of an asshole for this one. I love how this guy is literally shifting around. Now the auto cannon. Don't even. Why would you waste the auto cannon on this? Just use your gun. He got frustrated, and now he's missing with an auto cannon. I was about to say, they just run flying fin over? Just leave him there. You won. GG. He's packing up. They're trying to pop smoke grenades in the fucking ocean. <laughs> they just dismounted the boat. No, it's because of... Okay. All right, guys. That's, uh, let's see. A one, two-kilometer swim. 
but at least they pinned a triple one seven down, yeah? Maybe this BTR could like turn its gun around and help? No? Okay, just thought I'd ask. Thirty-five minutes left in this stupid round. There has to be a mercy rule? Yeah, it's called drowning in the freaking ocean. And Shancho, find his breath. Okay, how many rounds of, uh, I think it's 2,200 across two 1,100 belts, right? Yeah. Yeah, you have plenty of machine gun ammo. Just use it. Oh, yeah, I disconnect, too, because it's... I would have already told my commander that this was a stupid plan. And then when we got blown up, I would then just stop. And then I would just cut the footage to the commander telling me to use the boat, me telling the commander that he's an idiot, and then us jump cutting or like speeding through the footage at like eight times speed with stupid music playing. And then the part where we got auto cannon, and then I'd say a one-liner about, wow, that really was stupid, eh? And then I'd stop the footage. And boom, that's the video. That's the video. Of course the Finnish guy gets knocked out. gone back to the auto cannon because he's frustrated he can't hit them because uh you know the vehicle's only what 836 meters away and he's turned around looking for the damn vehicle realizing he's not going to be able to find a freaking angle I, I really hope they don't forget to blow that thing up because that's kind of this. <laughs> Why am I even commentating this? This is dumb. <laughs> Finn's still on con. He's going to drown in a second. Honestly, though, I, I again, I would just, I would just let it take me. Why is there a drop? Of, what the fuck? Wait, so why is there this? Is this how the ocean works? So Sancho's also on Confin, I think just died. <laughs> yeah. It's like a movie. Boop. Oh yeah, there's another drop off over here. And then a steep climb right here. What the hell? I don't think this is how oceans are supposed to work. And he's just gonna stay there the entire time shooting this. Cause the BTR is like, nah, they'll be fine. <laughs> Not even in attempts to go and help him. These people meanwhile dismounting. <sighs> He's a fish now. <laughs> What's the little mermaid's name? Ariel, imagine her playing around with that damn flounder and that crab and all of a sudden a Finnish body in, in Russian EMR just floats down to the bottom. You know what that reminds me of? Um, an SNL skit from back when they assassinated Osama bin Laden and they were doing a, a bit and then all of a sudden the wrapped up body fell in behind them and they freaked out. <laughs> That's what that reminds me. God, back when SNL was really funny and didn't get super into politics, they did on occasion. 
Oh, now it's now it's a bit more of a cesspool, but it still has some good moments. The triple one seven just gave up. Bullshit that they ran out of ammo, but it looks like they just killed four people and called it a day. Oh, great. Now the AD Alpha is sniping uh, Echo on this super top rooftop. Uh, God, rooftop. Mountain top. They fold down. That's from a little over a click away. Will the triple one seven respond with an auto cannon? No, it doesn't have the angle. Nope, oh, RPG launch. Miss. Close though. That was right on target, but unfortunately, this vehicle has the ability to drive forward. Wah, wah, wah. Eh, someone just died up there. <laughs> and there goes the admin. <laughs> Malin, please tell me you're in here, buddy. Please, I want to yell at you. Another RPG. Wait. Oh, he guessed it going forward, but it wasn't enough. Malin, you have you're always in here cuz you're the admin. Who approved this mission? I'm sending them a glitter bomb in the mail. You have these people just swimming for over here because that's the closest piece of land in the triple one seven. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I love how a majority of uh, the gunner's points are from. They count boats as tank kills. The 80 Alpha gets sniped by an RPG. That's. No, Wheaton got the kill with the vehicle. So that 80 Alpha that went all the way around got auto cannoned. You know, that screaming kind of reminds me of myself right now for having to cover this match. You okay, buddy? Yeah, I don't think Buddy's okay. How about you? Yeah, me too. Isn't that great? All right, so we got Op4 slowly moving up here. Blue 4 has a defensive line. Depso, the monkey commander here, is uh, what? He's just chilling in this building over here? Yeah. Literally in the back corner. At an angle that can normally be flanked, but can't because that area is out of bounds. And occasionally we have hunt IRs. That, no, that might be in GL. Maybe. Nope, it's on tire. All right. So they're going to see Op 4 coming. And we're at the 40 minute mark, which means 20 minutes left in this AO, which is what I predicted. Technically 21 minutes, but yeah, it would take freaking Blue 4 20 to 30 minutes to get here, and then we just have 20 minutes of action remaining. One silver lining, this is adorable, and I hope to do this with my kids. He even gave Little Banks the machine gun. I would do that too. It's like when I put Bloodwing in the gunner of my MRAP and just drove around going, shoot him! Just shoot him! Oh shit, I hit the button that hides their pop-ups. Yeah, it's not that button. Yeah, who do you think 
Little Banks has been the past few times. Who do you think Little Banks is? <laughs> So this triple one seven is now gonna drive around and flank them in the rear. These people are still walking. Someone at least went up. Wait, no one's destroyed. So even if they assassinate the target, you still have this back here that no one's dealt with. I fucking. All right, it's a blue four victory. Just. Ugh. I'm trying to find the button that frickin' puts our interface back up and I can't seem to find it. Oh well. Opt for our bottlenecks here so they can't really move. Once this vehicle comes around and starts hitting him from the rear, it's going to be GG. AT is now going on this position. No, I was wrong on the time. It's 65 minutes total, so it's another 23 minutes of the round. So the assault started out at the 25-minute mark, not the 30-minute mark. This is why I have a stress ball at my desk to throw around. You might hear it in the back of my mic, but it's like I just... This is now just a freaking two-choke point op. Blue 4 has better control of the AO. Op 4 are partially displaced. We just had Cats throw himself off of a hill. And he was still ragdolling. Did did he like slide off? I I don't even know at this point. I don't know what's more entertaining, watching these chuckleheads slide down a hill and knock themselves unconscious, or this Charlie Foxtrot. And my roster info broke, so I can't tell you kill counts. In our art county. Yeah, I've been hitting the I key and it hasn't been coming back up. And I'm like, I could have sworn it was that damn key, but whatever. Has Little Banks gotten any kills? Nope. I'm curious, who on Blue 4 has? Because Op 4... I actually haven't lost that many people. Wait, how do you have a death and you're back? I, okay. Depso also knows necromancy. Okay, so Zoni and Flux are here, but they're... They've just climbed back here. Wheaton's gotten five kills out of the vehicle, so it was two in that vehicle crew and he's picked off the three more. So the infantry haven't even really even done much. Where's the other BTR-80 Alpha? Oh. It's in a pit. On reserve, doing nothing. Oh, it's okay, Liru. Remember your karma. Is it done yet? Yeah. Like I said, next stop will be in a little under an hour. We'll be on the ground. We'll have some fun shooting stuff. I think I promised I'd squad lead, so that'll wake me up. Barking orders at people.
I love these guys still haven't. And by the time it 20 more minutes, less than 20 minutes, they still have to walk this entire distance. They're they're kind of just out of the game completely. Yeah, right oh big bro. We still got lots of streaming to do today, but I guess we'll just take this as a bit of a wall. So here's the deal. They're gonna try to make it up to Delta's position. Delta, if you've noticed, has been kind of cut down to only a handful of people because of a marksman in the triple one seven. These guys don't really have any maneuvering angle to work with because of how bottleneck this is. They're trying to call up their BTR-80 Alpha to assist. That's gonna potentially get intercepted by the Northern triple one seven. And there, there really just is nothing this op four force can do. So now we're just kind of stuck here. Yeah, it's been a watch on futility. They're trying to smoke charge now. But, I mean, again, just an example of how a poorly made mission executes. I see the spirit of what Katz was going for, but, yeah. Eh. You got Echo all the way over here with AT ready to snipe any additional vehicles, but these guys are now trying to make a move. So yeah, you're just basically charging defensive lines here with only smoke cover, and you even have a team of two that's moved up. They even dropped, one of them dropped their backpacks so they can aim better, that's six me. Which is a smart call. So those two members of Delta that were ahead, yeah, they're dead now. And let me guess what killed them. Are you at seven? Nope, you're still only at five, so someone else got those kills. Oh boy. And now you have the 80 Alpha. I think they're looking for the triple one seven, so the Matt team's gonna go blow up the objective that it can. This thing, I think, was waiting around to try to destroy the triple one seven, which has now slipped through and is now going to drive up and hit this remaining team in the rear if there even is anything remaining for them to hit. Because I just watched another dude get sniped in the damn water. Another dude died right there on the front. You just got sniped like, bro. Would anyone be mad at me if we just stopped the stream here? This is clearly gonna be a blue four victory. Like the only thing I can think of is if Op4 brings the auto cannon up and somehow magically knows that Debso's on the top story here and just starts trying to snipe him with the AP rounds. That's like the only way I can think of them actually killing Debso with a long range hit. Because they do have the render distance for it. Yeah, now you got these guys over here because everyone that tried to push died. Now you have the other triple one seven trying to find an angle. And you can't even get anyone with the damn machine gun. Yep. Got someone with the auto cannon. Get someone else with the auto cannon. That dude's on the opposite side of the hill. Like, it, just charge with the gas. Yeah, that's the only thing you can do. It's suicide, but at the same time, there's nothing else he can do. And it might actually work. I think his engine just got cut. Now he's just coasting. 
just charge over to that position. Now dismount and run. Bypass the defensive line and run. Run straight to the objective because that's all you can do. So we have a small break in the line here and now there actually might be a chance for Op4 to still win. Mito and Seven maybe can make it. And a triple one seven goes up in smoke. That had to have been a friendly fire. No, Batty got an RPG hit. Beautiful shot there. Now you have the other triple seven pulling back because blue four command is too much of a coward to fight two people. Of course, they don't know it's not a full gas, but still like, whatever. Norris is running over to check. Other BTRs coming up to pick more people up. Yeah, now it's gonna start getting a little more interesting here. They don't have any AT to flame out that other triple one seven, so they're just gonna cautiously move around. I love how I threatened to just not cover this and then something violently interesting happens. But again, like, that's, that's the only play Op4 can make. I'm not making fun of these two. They did the only thing they could do in that situation. Zixmi, you've done a great service by killing the spawn camping 113. And now the other trip, excuse me, the triple one seven, but now the other one's just kind of maneuvering around. Wait, Seven's an explosive specialist, but they got spotted. Seven could, in theory, throw a satchel on this building. I don't think Pepega pirate members are going to let him. But in theory, if Depso was alone back here, he could just satchel the building and win. Oh, hey, look, the off-road finally got destroyed. Oh! Yeah, I'm waiting for Norris to get behind them and kill him. And then I'm just going to call it. All of them for an off-road that was already in their territory. <sighs> can Norris save the stream by killing these last two op fours so we can wrap the damn thing up already? I commend these guys for maneuvering because now they're going to take the long way around because they can go with the direct route. Norris had to have seen them run that way. Now the question is, is he going to get blue on blue by the defensive tower? He does have an LR, so he should be able to call in. Hey, I just saw you guys shooting. Make sure you don't shoot because I'm right behind him. Is what I wish he would say. Send in goat Sully, thanks for the 11 month resub. Now. Hope you keep enjoying the operations. Hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. Can Norris kill the two op four members before he is killed by a blue on blue incident? Find out in over the next few minutes. I'm not doing well, man. Okay, come on. Yes. Oh, he's gonna noob tube? What what the fuck? Amazing. Now kill the other guy. Okay, I mean, that's a good start. Reload your noob tube. Do it again. Wait, the other guy just died. Alexander kills the other one. All right, yeah, GG. Blue 4 wins. Um, We'll be back at the top of the hour. I'm going to go re try to regain some sanity. Thank you so much for watching. Go operate operationally. Enjoy the rest of your day or night. Cheers. And have a good one. Batty up to bat. Running through the open. It's going to make it in the cover. All right. Yeah. This was a dumb round.